Do you know the actual science behind how a snake actually sheds its skin? Because I didn't, but I've spent the last two weeks poring over this. I've bought multiple textbooks just for this video, and I've read multiple studies. So let me take you downstairs and we'll go over exactly how a snake sheds its skin. Basically, with ecdysis and snakes, what we have is a resting phase. That is when your snake is literally nowhere near, near a shed at all. Um, and that's just them going about there every day. Um, and then we have the renewal phase, and that's basically the process of shedding. During the resting phase, this is basically the layers that I would like us to focus on. So right at the bottom, you've got the dermis. Now the dermis isn't necessarily involved in shedding. This is where the blood capillaries are kept, and it's just before the epidermis. So the epidermis is the top layer of the skin. Below the dermis, what we're going to have is our muscle tissue and things like that, but that's kind of irrelevant to the point of shedding. Essentially, the epidermis of snakes is essentially layers of keratin and different types of keratin. So they have alpha keratin and beta keratin. Now, alpha keratin is basically what we would recognize in mammals. That's where, that's essentially what we have in our nails and hair. That's alpha keratin. Snakes have the alpha keratin, but they also have beta keratin, which is commonly similar to what birds' feathers are. So snakes have both alpha and beta keratin. So this whole entire epidermis is basically layers of keratin performing different functions. So what this very, very, very top layer is, is called the Oberhauptchen, which is a German word. And it's the very, very top layer of beta keratin cells. This is a tightly woven layer of keratinized dead cells. And I've tried to represent that in the way that I've drawn it. So it kind of looks like scales, but what it really is, is a load, load of layers of keratinized dead cells. And this basically plays a role in the microstructures on the surface of scales, which has elements to do with like color, etc. And then beneath this very top layer of B cells is what we have is our layer of beta keratin. The function of the, this beta keratin layer is basically mechanical. What that means is, is that it's there to provide structure. So when the dermis moves and as a snake is performing locomotion and moving, what essentially happens is this is providing an equilibrium of force between the movement below and the structure of the underside of scales. So it's keeping the structure of the scales from below. So these two layers you can say are the actual structure of scales. Now this layer here is called the mesos layer, but this is a layer of lipids which controls the transfer and movement of water within the epidermis. And what that does, essentially this acts as a blocking layer, stopping the snake's skin from losing moisture to the environment. Now below this we have our alpha keratin, and below this what we have is our stratum germinativum. Yeah, there's a load of mouthfuls in this video, but we'll get there. Basically what the stratum germinativum is, is basically a layer of living cells, which all layers above that proliferate from, which means this is a layer of living cells producing the layers above. So as time goes on, the cells will basically proliferate and form a new layer above. And as time goes on, and as the cells mature, they keratinize, which means they get more and more keratinized up the layers you go. So that's all there is to the resting phase. You've got the structure here, you've got your mesos, which stops water transfer from leaking to the environment, and you've got your alpha keratin, and then you've got your layer of living cells called the stratum germinativum, which also acts as a barrier between the epidermis, which is all of this, and the dermis. All these keratinized layers, basically all the cells above the stratum germinativum, which have keratin, are basically called the stratum corneum, which is the keratinized layers. When we start to get into our epidermal renewal phase, what actually happens is that the stratum germinativum starts producing more layers below. So what really happens is we end up having a outer older generation and an inner generation of the same exact order of layers of keratinized cells. So the stratum germinativum will start proliferating cells which form the layers repeated up here. So what you get is you get a clear layer that forms between the outer generation and the inner generation. And I hope I've drawn this in a way that it looks like what it's supposed to be, but this is basically immature 
This is immature cells of the Oberhauchen. See, it kind of looks like scales, but I've tried to draw it, it's like they're not fully formed, not fully keratinized, so it kind of resembles this layer. And I hope that helps to like to learn it. Basically, if I move this up, I'm not I haven't left myself much room here to be fair with the paper. We have our immature beta keratin layer. And again, I've not left myself much space. So I'll move the outer generation up there. We have our new mesos layer. And what we have is our immature alpha keratin. So what we end up with is having both the older outer generation of the epidermis alongside a new inner generation of the epidermis. And during the process of shedding, what actually happens is between the clear layer, between the clear layer and the inner gener generations Oberhauchen, the upper scale layer of B cells, is that a cl clear fluid will form in between these two layers. Oops, a clear layer will form here. And that's exactly what you see when a snake is going into blue. You especially see it when you look at the spectacle scales of a snake's eyes. And as this whole process is happening, these inner generation of epidermis is actually maturing and beginning to keratinize. What actually happens here is a layer of lacuna cells, which I haven't drawn, um, form below this layer here. And then what happens is our fluids are reabsorbed and there's enzymes that break down things like the cementing material and things like that, but we don't need to go that far. But what happens at the time of shedding is at the very, very point of epidural renewal, there's a lot of words here, is these, set, these layers basically are pretty much mature. And the clear layer here and the Oberhauchen basically it's what is described as they unzip. So as the snake sheds, and if you are keeping snakes, you know what that looks like. It's basically how it peels back. It basically unzips between these two layers. So if you can imagine that this, these two layers basically unzip from each other and pull away, and that's that peeling back of the two generations of layers. And then obviously, of course, what we end up doing once that's sloughed off, we end up back to a state of a resting phase. And it looks exactly like this. We've got a stratum corneum here, a stratum germinativum, and a dermal layer. And this is our basal resting phase. Before we go again, and the whole cycle goes over again. So the next time that your snake basically sheds, the next time you hold a shed in your hand, it's not just a snake shed. What you've actually got is a shed of the Oberhauchen, beta keratin, the mesos layer, and the alpha layer. Oh, and also in this shed is also the clear layer. And this is when you start to realize how complex and completely amazing the process is. So you are holding all these layers on top of each other. Just like that in your hands. So now you know how a snake sheds its skin and the science behind that and how fascinating and truly amazing that is. Do I think that that necessarily means you're gonna have better husbandry knowing this? Not really. What I do think is it allows you to have a greater appreciation for the animal that you have and I don't think you can put a number on how valuable that actually is.